Let's do one more example. Let's say that I've got this IR and these NMR spectra. First thing I do is I look at my IR and try to figure out, is there a carbonyl? Is there one? Yes, there is. It's right here. Now, question is, is there an OH? Hmm, well, I don't see anything over here to the left of my CH uh, stretches here. But what do I see? Well, I notice that these CHs get wide at the top. Do you see that? What does that wideness mean? Well, you might remember from our previous lecture that when it gets wide at the top, that tells me that there is an OH. And specifically, that is a carboxylic acid OH. Now that I know I do have a carbonyl, I'm going to look at my carbon NMR and see where that appears. It's always the leftmost signal. The leftmost signal does indeed appear between 160 and 180, which tells me it has to be a carboxylic acid, an amide, or an ester. Now once again, I can pretty well uh, deduce from my IR that it is a carboxylic acid, so I don't really have to worry about amide or ester. Let's go on to our carbon or our hydrogen NMR. I'm going to do my integrals. The smallest integral I'm going to measure with my little ruler and decide, yeah, that looks like about 1 in height. I'm going to call however many millimeters that is 1. And proportionally, I'll measure from horizontal to horizontal each of the remaining integrals. Horizontal to horizontal is about twice that height, or twice the height of the integral over here, so this is 2. This one is also about the same, so it's 2. I also measure the remaining, and I find out 2 to 2 to 3. Now that I've measured my integrals, I figure out what those individual pieces are based on where they appear in the NMR. This signal over here is offset by 3.2 ppm, which means that it's actually appearing to the left about 3.2 ppm. So it's somewhere around 13. What kind of hydrogen appears at 13? Carboxylic acid hydrogen. What about these two signals? I've got signals that are 2 to 2 in uh, 6 to 8 region. This is aromatic land. Now granted this is slightly outside of 8. Don't worry about it. Aromatic land. How can I get 2 to 2 ratio in an aromatic land? What that is, it is a Paris disubstituted benzene. So these two hydrogens here, if the, assuming that the substituents coming off opposite sides of the benzene are different, then the hydrogen coming off of here and here would be equivalent and they would integrate for 2. The hydrogen here and here would also be equivalent to each other, but they'd be different from the other two, and they would also integrate for two. You see nice, neat two doublets appearing in aromatic land? That tells you, bam, it is a para-disubstituted benzene. What about this? This is all appearing below five, so it's all single bond land. Two hydrogens, CH2. Two hydrogens, another CH2. Three hydrogens. CH3. I've now done everything I need to with these spectra. I just have to put the pieces together in my playing Lego step. The challenge with this particular molecule, or these pieces I should say, is that I could imagine uh, three different ways of putting these pieces together. I got my benzene ring with my CH3 coming off of the left, my CH2, my CH2, and my carboxylic acid coming off the right. That's one way I could put them together. Is there another way? Of course, I could imagine one of these CH2s being here and the other CH2 and CH3 coming off of the other side of the benzene ring. Or I could put all these pieces together in a third way. Benzene ring, carboxylic acid off the right, CH2, CH2, CH3 off the left. These are three different ways of putting these pieces together. One of them is correct and the other is not. How do I tell? By looking at splitting. Now in the previous example that we did, splitting was not necessary because there was only one way we could put the pieces together. When there are multiple potentially correct ways of putting them together, then you look at splitting. What would the splitting of the hydrogens here be? Well, these hydrogens look at the next door carbon and ask how many hydrogens are there. The answer is zero. So I take zero and I add one to it. The hydrogens here would be a singlet. What would the splitting of these hydrogens be? Well, I look next door, and I have zero hydrogens here. And I look next door the other way. I've got two hydrogens there. I add one to it, he'd be a triplet. How about these hydrogens? I look next door and see zero hydrogens on that carbon, two hydrogens on this carbon. I add one to it, triplet. Down here, these hydrogens look next door and see two hydrogens. I add one to it, triplet. These hydrogens right here look next door in one direction, see zero hydrogens. 
look next door the other directions, I see three. I add one to it, they'd be a quartet. These hydrogens look next door and see zero in this direction, and zero hydrogens in the other direction. I add one to it, they'd be a singlet. These hydrogens down here look next door and see two hydrogens. I add one to it, triplet. These hydrogens look next door in one direction and see three. In the other direction, they see two more. I add one to that, it is a sextet. I wrote P for pentet, but that's incorrect. It should be a sextet, which is also called a sextet. These hydrogens look next door in one direction and see zero. They look next door in the other direction and see two. I add one to it, they should be a triplet. Whew. So now that I've looked at the splitting patterns that each of these individual compounds would produce, I have to decide which of those is consistent with this NMR spectrum. Now it might, might not be absolutely clear what the splitting pattern is here, but I'm telling you that if you were given a, an example on a standardized exam, they would make it much clearer. It's obvious, however, that none of these hydrogen's signals is a singlet. This is obviously something wider than a singlet. This is something way wider than a singlet, and so is this. So any of these examples that have singlets in them, I can automatically eliminate. This CH3 is not a singlet. It looks like at least a triplet. This CH2 is not a singlet. None of the, neither of these CH2s are singlets. So the only uh, compound that would be consistent is this bottom one here. Now that we've guessed this answer, let's see if it's consistent with all of the data that I have. I look at my IR. I've seen a carbonyl and an OH consistent with a carboxylic acid. Does my guess have a carboxylic acid? Oh yeah. C13NMR, the carbonyl shows up between 160 and 180, consistent with a carboxylic acid amateur ester. Is my guess one of those? Oh yeah. Based on my hydrogen NMR, I've got a signal that integrates for one somewhere around 13. That is consistent with a carboxylic acid OH. Do I have that in my guess? Yes, I do. I also have two separate signals, each doublets in aromatic land, integrating for 2 to 2. That is consistent with a di-substituted para-substituted benzene ring. Do I have that in my guess? Yes, I do. I also have, for my integration, three different signals in single bond land, 2 to 2 to 3 consistent of being a CH2, CH2, and CH3. The splitting tells me that these, uh, none of these are singlets, so none of them can be isolated by itself as in these two guesses here. Thus, they must all be in a straight chain. Is my answer consistent with all of the data? Absolutely yes. Is my answer correct? Yes, it is. These examples have hopefully been helpful for you guys. I have additional examples posted on Canvas under our 2310 uh, folder that you can look up our sample NMR packet. And this ends all of uh, my lecture today on NMR spectroscopy. I hope that it's been helpful. Of course, the best way for you to learn it is to do it yourself, so I will give you several examples in our practice packet in class. Until then, have a good day.